This is the first video in what will be a multi-part series looking at the Axe FX3 Fender amp models. Because there are so many different amps modeled from different eras, I figured it would be good to do a little intro vid where we basically just lay out the framework of how to approach this. I did a similar thing looking at the Marshall models, and I grew up playing Marshalls. I was really fortunate that, you know, my dad's a guitar player, he loved Marshall amps, so he had a bunch of cool amps sitting around, and I kind of cut my teeth on that sound, so I'm fairly familiar with it, whereas I still don't own a Fender amp to this day. I did uh, do some gigs maybe six or seven years ago now using a Blues Junior, and I love that little thing, and that kind of opened my eyes a little bit to the uh, what people would consider the Fender sound. And on that note, what is the Fender sound? What do we mean when we talk about like the sound of a Fender amp? I think it's one of these things kind of like when people say, what's the Marshall sound or what's the Dumble sound? It means different things to different people. And furthermore, on top of that, there's different eras of Fender sound. You know, if you look at the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, all the way up to sort of modern creations, what people consider a Fender sound definitely means different things. But I think one way to look at it is to look at the different vintage eras. And these are normally divided into the uh, cosmetic appearance of the amps. So we have tweed amps, which were the original Fenders from, I guess Fender started making amps in the 40s. But you know, normally this refers to stuff like the Tweed Bassman or the Champ or the Tweed Twins. So these kind of 50 circuit that, you know, they had the sort of tweed uh, outer and the specific grill cloth. And then that moved into the brown face era where they were covered in brown Tolex, stuff like the Vibroverb. And then into what I would consider the classic Fender sound, which is the Fender Blackface amps of the mid 60s. And then they evolved into the Silver Face amps. And then, uh, you know, we had all the stuff through the 70s and the 80s, like the Evil Twins and the Paul Rivera amps. and They've got stuff like the Blues Junior and the Vibro King, which are great amps as well. Uh, I've had a little bit of a play on a real Vibro King, and I really, really like that amp, as well as a real Silver Face Twin sitting out at the studio that I do a lot of work out. And yeah, they you know they have that kind of sound. But I think for me, it's the black face sound that most people associate. You know, like neck pickup on a Stratocaster, black face twin or deluxe, and uh, yeah, that's sort of the sound that so many of us are chasing. Of course, we've got models of all of these different apps in the Axe FX3. So what I wanted to show off, I'm gonna use the same impulse response for all of these. And I'm just gonna show you the tweed, the silver face, the black face, and the brown face, and what I consider to be the differences in there. Uh, I haven't ordered these scenes, so that's a little mistake, but we'll start with the tweed. And the representative amp for me with this is the Tweed Deluxe. I love the way this thing sounds, and it has this kind of characteristic tweed snarl to it. So let's go to, in this preset, scene four. So this is a Tweed Deluxe. Uh, in the Axe FX3, in the Tweed Deluxe basically only had a tone control rather than like a three band EQ. So this is modeled with the treble controller. Basically crank the, the treble controller up to about three o'clock and I've got the drive at six. This is an impulse uh, made by Justin York from York Audio. This cab pack should be coming out at some time this month and I think it sounds really, really great. I think it's based around like a 60s Oxford speaker or something like that. And this is a blend of a 313 and a 4119 microphone. Uh, this to me encapsulates like that tweedy kind of sound. <laughs> As you, it's a very dynamic sounding amp, you know, just playing that gets me excited, especially on the bridge pickup, it can sort of do a crunch. Or if you're playing the neck pickup and you play with like your thumb or your finger. It's got this beautiful grit to it. So that is sort of characteristic to me of uh, the 
Fender Tweed sound, which of course is actually, it means lots of different things. If you're playing a Champ through, through a 1x8 speaker, it's going to sound totally different to like playing a high-powered Tweed Twin through 410s or 412s or, you know, 810s, whatever sort of cabinet choice you want to make. And obviously cabinet choice is a very big factor there. So let's move on to the brown face. Uh, to me, the classic brown face amp is a Vibroverb. This is probably my favorite amp model when it comes to Fenders in the Axe FX3. And you'll hear the difference straight away from the Tweed, so I'll just play. So super clean, super big and fat, That's that to me is when I want a sort of Fender sound, I always think of that particular sound. Let's have a listen to the black face, which is similar, but you notice there's a little bit more sort of break up in there, and on this one I'm using the deluxe reverb. Of course, talking about these errors can be a bit misleading as well, because we're obviously talking about different amps and different circuits. So keep in mind that when I say like a tweed sound, obviously Fender had a bunch of different models with the tweed covering. When I talk about a brown face or a black face or a silver face, uh, there's not one amp which represents that sound. Different silver face amps will sound different. Different black face amps will sound different. Uh, but hopefully this is giving you an idea of I think what most guitar players talk about when they talk about like brown face or tweed. So this to me is a classic black face kind of sound, the deluxe reverb, uh, bridge pickup of a Strat, you get a little bit of snarl, neck pickup, it sort of cleans up a bit. <laughs> So that is the blackface kind of sound to me. It's got a little bit more grit normally the way guitar players set it. And like I said earlier, you know, there's you, know, you can set this up for less gain. I've got the input drive at about six with this one. And then finally the silver face, which normally I'd associate with more of a kind of high headroom kind of Fender sound. There's not a whole lot of difference though between certain blackface and silver face amps. Often they're using the same circuit. We'll talk about that in a second. So. Silver face, in this case, I've got the Princeton. The Princeton's actually a cool one to compare in the Axe FX3 because we have a tweed version, we have a black face version, and we have a silver face version. So you can have a listen to the difference between those. Another thing as well is like different amps are gonna sound different as well. So, you know, take all of this with a grain of salt, but this to me is a classic silver face Fender kind of sound.
which has a bit more of the black face character, but a bit more of the like brown face headroom. So uh, they're the four main things. And obviously we've got stuff like the Vibro King and the Blues Junior, which have their own thing going on. So that's how we can break down some of the different vintage amps. One thing that I would really recommend going and checking out is either on the Fractal Wiki, where there's a bunch of information about the different amps and they're grouped by manufacturer, or go and check out Yex Amp Guide. It's such an amazing resource for just figuring out what these actual amps are modeled on. Uh, I use that a lot when I was kind of putting this video series together and I basically shot a whole video where I was just going through amp by amp and referencing his amp guide and it went on for like 30 or 40 minutes. And that's when I realized I was like, I should break this down into parts and kind of give you guys an overview. So hopefully that gives you an idea of like the different eras. And I think what most guitar players think about are the characteristic sounds from that era. The other thing is obviously guitar choice, you know, at the moment I'm playing playing a YJM Strat, which a lot of people wouldn't consider like a kind of vintage choice, you know, Scallop Fingerboard and Damasio Noiseless Pickups, uh, as well as, you know, your string gauge is going to play a big sort of factor in there with these kind of clean sounds. Uh, just the sort of sound that you're going for, you know, a lot of people go for a Fender and want to get like a Stevie Ray kind of sound. Some people might want to get like a Mark Knopfler Dire Straits kind of thing. So we'll talk about all of these things going on. Another thing is like the circuit type as well. Uh, really briefly, and I don't know a whole lot about this, but I will put a link to a really good description of it in the, in the uh, video description, is this classic Fender AB763 circuit, which they introduced in the early 60s. So a lot of amps like the Blackface Twin and the Deluxe Reverb and I think the Super Reverb and the Bandmaster and a whole bunch of these Fender amps, they're basically the same circuit with different names on the front panel and different speaker choices. So essentially like taking a particular circuit and going, you know what, this paired with 410s is a particular amp, this paired with 212s is a particular amp. So if you find a Fender model that you like in the three that you feel sort of has the right gain structure and EQ that you like and it works well with your guitars, you can simulate other models just by choosing different speaker cabinets and there are so many different choices in there from the 1x8 Champ sort of stuff to the 4x10 Bassman or you know the 2x12 Twin or Deluxe Reverb or Tweed Deluxe, all those kind of things. So speaker choice is a massive factor as well as you know, you're choosing like a 1x8 with a 57 is gonna sound really snarly, whereas like a 410 with a ribbon microphone on it, it's gonna sound totally different again. So you really need to dive in and experiment with those kind of things. The other thing as well is reverb. Like a lot of these Fender amps had reverb and either vibrato or tremolo. So I'll give you an idea of what that sounds like. I'll go tweed, brown face, black face, silver face with spring reverb. And I put the spring reverb before the amp, which is essentially how these vintage Fenders work. So really quickly. <laughs> So we went tweed, brown face, black face, silver face in that order. And like I said, my representative for the tweed was a tweed deluxe. My representative for the brown face was a vibroverb. My representative for the black face was the Fender uh, deluxe reverb. Yeah, deluxe reverb from memory. And the silver face was the Princeton with no reverb. And like I said, if you want to check out the different flavors between tweed, black face, and silver face, uh, try the three different Princeton models because they all sound uh, different and they all have those kind of characters, which I think uh, kind of sums up those errors. So you can either look at the Fender amps uh, as individual amps and there's like so many choices that it can be overwhelming, or you can try to group them by errors, which I think is a good way to do it. Or you can sort of just group them by like the circuits and you can chase down say that AB763 blackface circuit, try out all the different amps. Um, or what I would do is suggest just 
try all of them, find one that you like, try different speaker cabs and different guitars and you get a bunch of different tones. And that is what I'm hoping to achieve in this series. We'll break them down into different eras. So we'll do a video on tweeds, a video on the brown face, a video on the black faces and the silver faces, and hopefully the modern ones, and then look at different guitars, you know, throwing drive pedals into them, different effects that you can work with them, and uh, that should keep me busy for a couple of months. So uh, if you haven't already, hit subscribe on the video, hit the little bell so you get a notification, and I will try to stay up to date with all of these. And if you have suggestions or questions, please leave a comment. I would love to hear from all of you guys. And uh, like I said, keep your eye out for this York Audio Impulse Pack, which is coming out, because I think it sounds great with just about any Fender amp that you like. Thanks so much for watching the video, uh, and I will hopefully see you guys very soon, and we'll dive into the Tweed amps in the Axe FX3. See you then.